Hello. In this video, we will talk about how to find the length of a curve, also known as arc length. We know how to find the length of a straight path. We simply apply the distance formula, also known as the Pythagorean theorem, assuming we have coordinate axes to indicate horizontal and vertical displacements. So if I want to find the length of the segment connecting points negative 3, negative 1, and 6, 5, I simply think of that segment as the hypotenuse of a right triangle, and I apply the Pythagorean theorem, which says that I take the square of the horizontal displacement plus the square of the vertical displacement and take the square root. And so doing so, I'm going to get the square root of 117, which is 3 times the square root of 13. But how do we proceed if the curve is not linear? How do we find its length? We are going to same, follow the same theme we've applied so far in this course. We will take small pieces of the curve, in other words, we will partition the curve. We'll then use basic geometry to find their lengths, i.e. the distance formula, and we'll sum those lengths to approximate the length of the entire curve using a Riemann sum. Once we have the sum, we can take the limit of the sum as the norm of the partition goes to zero, which leads to the definite integral. Let's consider how we apply this partition and sum theme and demonstrate why it works to find the length of a curve. Suppose we have a smooth curve and we cut it into many pieces. On a short interval, the small pieces are approximately short line segments, so we can use the distance formula to find the length of a segment. So here we've got a curve. We've cut it into many pieces, n pieces in this case. We're going to call each piece delta s sub k, so delta s sub 1, delta s sub 2, and so on. If I want to look at the length of delta s sub k, the kth piece, I'm going to say, well, on a short interval, that interval between x sub k minus 1 and x sub k, that's, that curve piece actually almost looks like a straight line. So I'm going to think of that as the hypotenuse of a right triangle with legs of delta x sub k and delta y sub k. And then I'll say that the length of the curve s is approximate, approximated by summing those pieces delta s sub k, k going from 1 to n. Suppose I have the interval from a to c, and we partition this interval into n pieces. This partition then cuts the curve given by the function y equals f of x into n pieces. I approximate the length of each piece using the Pythagorean theorem. So delta s sub k is approximately the square root of delta x sub k squared plus delta y sub k squared. If you recall from Calculus 1, we worked with differentials. The slope of the tangent line to the function f at x sub k is given by m equals the derivative of f evaluated at x sub k. But we know that this is approximately delta y sub k over delta x sub k. So therefore, if I solve for delta y sub k, I'm going to get that delta y sub k is approximately f prime of x sub k times delta x sub k. So when I come back up here to delta s sub k, I can make a substitution for delta y sub k squared, and I'm going to get delta s sub k is approximately the square root of delta x sub k squared plus f prime of x sub k times delta x sub k quantity squared. And we're going to continue to work with this and perform some algebra. So delta s sub k is approximately the square root of x, delta x sub k squared plus f prime of x sub k times delta x sub k squared. And I've got now a delta x sub k squared in each term under the radical. And I can factor that out, take its square root, and I get that delta s sub k is approximately the square root of 1 plus f prime of x sub k squared times delta x sub k. Now, knowing that this is true for each delta s sub k, k going from 1 to n, I can sum these pieces, sum the length of these pieces to approximate the length of the curve. So s is approximately the sum k going from 1 to n of delta s sub k. But I also know that delta s sub k is now approximated by the square root of 1 plus f prime of x sub k squared delta x sub k. So I sum those pieces from 1 to n. And I think about the norm of the partition, the width of the widest subinterval, and I let that go to 0. And that sum converges to the definite integral from a to c of the square root of 1 plus f prime of x squared dx. 
Now again, I partitioned the interval x being between a and c, so therefore a and c become the limits of integration. Another way I can express this integral is the definite integral from a to c of the square root of 1 plus dy dx squared dx. This portion behind the integral sign is also called the arc length differential, and we also denote it as ds. Suppose the function f has an inverse function, and we solve for x as a function of y. So we'll say x is equal to g of y, and partition the interval along the y-axis instead of along the x-axis. So suppose these endpoints are b and d, and we partition the interval from b to d and cut the curve into small, nearly linear pieces and again apply the distance of formula to find the length of each small piece. So delta s sub k again is the square root of, is approximated by the square root of delta x sub k squared plus delta y sub k squared. We're again going to apply differentials, but this time we'll say that delta x sub k is approximately g prime of y sub k times delta y sub k. And again, making that substitution into our formula for delta s sub k, we get that delta s sub k is approximately the square root of g prime of y of k times delta y sub k squared plus delta y sub k squared. Again, we can factor out the delta y sub k squared, take its square root, and we get that delta s sub k is approximately the square root of g prime of y sub k squared plus 1, all times delta y sub k. Therefore, the length of the curve, s, is approximated by the Riemann sum, k going from 1 to n, of the square root of g prime of y sub k squared plus 1 delta y sub k. Again, letting the norm of the partition go to 0, we get that the Riemann sum converges to the definite integral from b to d of the square root of g prime of y squared plus 1 dy. And again, the interval from b to d was, was the interval that we partitioned along the y-axis, so those become our limits of integration. And alternatively, we can write this integral as the integral from b to d of the square root of dx dy squared plus 1 dy. Again, we have an arc length differential. This time it's in terms of y, but we again can denote this as ds. So many times we see arc length, when we look at arc length, which is given by s, it equals the integral of ds, where ds could be the square root of dx squared plus dy squared, or we can write it explicitly in terms of the square root of 1 plus dy dx squared dx, or the square root of 1 plus dx dy squared dy. So let's apply this idea and find the length of the curve of y equals one-third x squared plus 2 to the 3 halves power on the interval from 2 to 4. First we're going to sketch the curve on the interval and we'll note that this interval x sub 0 is 2, this x sub n is 4. We want to partition this interval from 2 to 4 so we get x sub 0, x sub 1, x sub 2, x sub 3, x sub k minus 1, x sub k, and on to x sub n and we note that x sub 0 is 2 and x sub n is 4. Working with that partition, delta s sub k is going to be the square root of delta x sub k squared plus delta y sub k squared, which is approximately the square root of 1 plus the square of dy dx times delta x sub k. So we're going to go off to the side and work with the derivative of y with respect to x. So we're going to take the derivative of 1 third x squared plus 2 to the 3 halves power, and we're going to bring that power out in front. So we get 3 halves times 1 third times x squared plus 2 to the 1 half power times the derivative of what's inside, namely x squared plus 2. So we'll get that this simplifies a bit. And we get that the derivative of 1 third x squared plus 2 to the 3 halves power is x times the square root of x squared plus 2. So we'll evaluate this derivative at x sub k and substitute that back into our formula for delta s sub k. So we get that delta s sub k is approximately the square root of 1 plus x sub k 
times the square root of x sub k squared plus 2, all squared, times delta x sub k. We can simplify things a bit. And when we uh, remove parentheses, we get the square root of 1 plus 2 times x sub k squared plus x sub k to the fourth times delta s x sub k. Now under the radical, we have a perfect square. We have the square root of 1 plus x sub k squared quantity squared delta x sub k. So then simplifying things further, we get that delta s sub k is approximately 1 plus x sub k squared times delta x sub k. So that's the length of a, of a kth piece. So to find the length of the curve on the interval from 2 to 4, we're going to sum the pieces, k going from 1 to n, of 1 plus x sub k squared times delta x sub k. We're going to take the limit of that Riemann sum as the norm of the partition goes to 0, and we're going to get the inter we're going to get the definite integral from 2 to 4 of 1 plus x squared dx. Integrating, we get x plus 1 third x cubed, evaluated from 2 to 4, which is 62 thirds units. So what are the important ideas from this video? First of all, basic geometry, namely the distance formula or Pythagorean theorem, can be applied to calculate something much more complex, the length of a curve. It's essential to draw and label diagrams, including indicating the interval being partitioned. This is part of visualizing and understanding the process. If the function has an inverse, then we can choose to partition the interval along the x-axis or the interval along the y-axis, leading to integration in either x or y, respectively. In some cases, the ease of finding the derivative and determining the integral leads to one choice over the other. And finally, watch your algebra. The concepts here are not very difficult, but it is easy to make an algebraic mistake, which can result in an unsolvable integral, or something that is very easy but is simply wrong. So please be very careful.